Today is May 13th, 2019, and you're listening to Episode 5 of Manchild and the Old Guy. He's the manchild of bearded 20-something, and I'm the old guy, cynical Gen Xer. This is your intergenerational podcast where he discusses pop culture, faith, politics, and whatever he finds interesting, and I just complain. Broadcasting from the basement, because that is where mom lets us, welcome to our stream of consciousness. Hi. Hello. How you doing, man child? I'm doing okay. How you doing, old guy? <laughs> old man. My dad. Father. Yeah. Fasha. Well, last week we were talking about how you had a... Uh... Did I take too long to... Ed- yeah, dude. The yeah. intro is just dragging on. Like, I can't even focus on what you were saying. It just kept going and going. And it, it hit that... And it just starts repeating. I'm like, dude, kill it. Come on. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. What, were, what were we talking about? I got it. I'm not it's, criticizing you. I'm just saying you're now. doing it. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just saying you're doing it wrong. Okay. It's constructive. Anyway, last week we were talking about that you had some finals in your classes. Yeah, so, okay, so I got my grades, and like I was telling everyone here, I've really been struggling with the stats class. It's been it's been kicking my butt, uh, but, you know, for this final, I really hunkered down, and I studied as much as I could, uh, got everything I needed for this test, was totally prepared for it, and my grades, uh, you're going to be pretty surprised with all of them. I got a solid C plus in my econ class. That's, why is that a good grade? Then I got a solid C. In my psych class, I was expecting something a little higher, um, but I got something. I think I missed a discussion grade somewhere. And then for my stats class, okay, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Got an F. I failed. Well, I, I failed that. Barely. By 1.7%. I failed that class by 1.7%. And I begged the teacher to let me do anything. Because that 1.7% is, um, I think it, it's like one dis- discussion grade. Where I just post one comment and I, and I don't do anything else, and I get like one fourth of credit, I would have passed the class. Yeah, that, that's how much. But I'm... some of your extra credit answers were asinine. Well, what else am I supposed to put? I don't have anything else to put. You, you you have to take the the thing. I I know, but some of your you were telling me about some of your answers. They were like mercy. Yeah, <laughs> the teacher was like, class. "What's something that can help you?" Um, finish this stats problem and i said mercy <laughs> right. you know what, what I'm, I'm trying to answer these but i don't know what to put they uh, could have been like a formula no well, there's the thing all right so she gives us a stupid paper um an outline for the exam over 12 chapters and says uh anything that is not on here will not be on the test cool she said, but there's lots of things on here that will be on the test. And there's lots of things on this outline that are on the outline, but will not be on the test. And? There, a majority of the stuff on the outline was not on the test. But the few things that were, were stupid. They go into farther depth. Then, like, we went into, Is like, there any possibility you misunderstood this instructor? No. Th- because that is the way it was set up. And o- a lot of people were really mad at it. Because it was set up with this whole, um, you know, you got so much, like, five things per these chapters. So you got, like, 60 things to look at. But she's only, some of these, she basically skipped some of these chapters. So why would you do that? I, I get it if you're, like, you don't care. You're just trying to, like, well, you should have mm-hmm. known better. But at some point, I mean, this is freaking community college, man. Did Just, anybody pass the class? I don't know. Because she basically turned everything off after that. Couldn't access any more discussions. It's the same thing where I can't go back and look at any of my previous tests or exams. Oh. So I, I, I don't know. But she, yeah, she had it set up so that... Um, and this is the class where you had to like videotape yourself taking the test, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so it was, it's so much stuff you have to do. And... You know, there's 60 different things you have to look at and understand for the final. And then you get to it, and she only picked one out of every other of these things that she's focusing on. But it's just, a, like, a small detail compared to all this other stuff. But then she makes huge problems out of it. Mm-hmm. Well, if I'm if I'm trying to focus on 60 different things because I don't know 
which ones will be on the test or will not. I am stretching my resources across all this stuff. I, if I was a teacher, not that I know any better or something, but I'm just saying if I were, if I were, and I wanted kids that you know to try and actually be able to study for this, mm -hmm. I would have made it. So I would tell you, anything that's not on this final won't be on the test, and everything that's on this, uh, or won't be on the final, won't be on the test. Won't be anything that's <laughs> anything that's on the outline will be on the test. Anything that is not in the outline won't be on the test. And I wouldn't fill it with a bunch of stuff that we're not going to cover. Mm -hmm. You know, because I was going on tangents on um, uh, critical values for hypothetical things. Uh, I, I couldn't remember how to do it really well. So I spent a lot of time trying to, to figure out how to do it through my calculator because you can't do it on paper. You have to do it through your calculator. You have to know how to program it to do it every time. Um, so I was trying to get that down. Then we get to the test. I put so much time into something I didn't understand, and it wasn't even on it. Really? Yeah. It, so th that's why it made me so mad by 1.7%. And the teacher said, well, if you actually told me if you were having issues in the class, um, then maybe I could have helped you earlier on. I'm like, How, wh do I really need to tell you I'm having issues in this class? Can't you just look at my grades? Exactly. Y you know, oh, gosh. Yeah, I failed that. I I'm kind of sick of it. Sick of it. Um, I was talking to mom the other day about maybe going to uh, Blackhawk, but then it doesn't make any difference because it would just be the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, although technically I could go into early childhood development and it has the least amount of credit hours and just get a degree in that because if I become a minister later on, then you know I, I can be a youth minister or something, right? Yeah, that's true. Well, what's your... Uh... We're sad to hear that you didn't pass your class. Yeah. And yeah. obviously you already went on a little bit of a rant about that. But um, what is your Zoomer rant this week about? Nothing super passionate uh, like weeks prior. But th this one just kind of strikes me odd. And I talk to a lot of people about it and they don't seem to understand it. And it's about uh, Zoomers living vicariously through the internet. Um, so... The, you'll hear that term a lot, vicarious living, mm -hmm. when it comes to Gen Xers. Excuse me. Um, You're I'm always so, I'm sorry, man. It's just drink. like it just it just like, kind of comes we up. We sit and talk I'm, all day I long, know, and I know. you it never belch. It just comes you up come, when I gotta go to the, when I gotta do the podcast. It's just, the podcast causes you to belch. What well, is, I just get that bubble in there. I know while I'm talking, it's just gonna blah, 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 right out. So I, I might as well say, excuse me. Anyways, what I'm saying is that the boomers and the Gen Xers, you know, the middle child of all the generations of the 20th century that no one really cares about, um, they're the ones that typically go through the living vicariously through their kids. So. Mm -hmm. Um, like you know, hypoth if you you played football in high school and stuff like that, uh, you you wanted to be a Husker. You wanted to make. Oh, it all I the was way. on track. To yeah, be... yeah, S exactly. See right there. You're you're already like I was, oh, I was on track. Uh, so like when it came to all your sons, there even though you say there wasn't, there was some definite pressure to play football and succeed at it, whether or not you want to agree with that or. Not it doesn't matter because there was wait, there was wait, whoa, 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 you whoa, never whoa, whoa. For, right there was I'm never gonna force you <laughs> force you to do it but it's like uh, a bouncer says I'm not gonna kick you out but it's like grabbing your shoulder squeezing it but if you I... mess up you're gonna regret it that's what it was kind of like it was really scary because I'm like I I gotta I gotta make you happy I gotta play football that, even though for whatever reason for me that was put football on does you not by even put on me by myself whatever what. Ever. If it was me pushing it on you, you would have played football the entirety of your life. No, because from second mom, grade mom, on, I'm mom's baby. She will come to my defense. <laughs> that is why. Um, but it, but it, 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 no, you stop. You're, before you go no, on, no, 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 you were doing the wait, vicariously. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're doing the vicarious thing. No, you're before going before the, you okay, go on, okay. let me give you forty five seconds of some truth. All right, I'm counting. First off. Mm -hmm. You out of your brothers, right? Have uh, in general the physique and the wherewithal to play sports. Yeah, yeah, I do more than your other your two brothers. Yep. Okay. Not saying that they're less physically prowess than you or any of that, but you. You've been given the God-given abilities to actually 
play sports well and not have to work so hard to be fast or have agil agility that other people don't have. Now, I saw this potential in you very early as I watched you jump off of cabinets and stuff. You, however, did not want to go in that direction. If I didn't like the stuff that you wanted to get into, I wouldn't have bought you art sets and things like that. And yes, I did want you to play sports because I wanted you to experience them, but I never, <coughs> excuse me, I never forced you, I, like your entirety you of your high school you career, me. your junior high. No, I'm not that. saying you forced I, me. You highly suggest you want me to play sports because in the because to an extent, you were kind of living vicariously through us because you blew out your knee, so you couldn't well, make it. So sorry. you're vicariously trying to. You know, live through your kids to get to that experience. Not, not, not in some not, negative way. I'm just saying that. The, I that, wanted that, you to extent, experience because the you couldn't work because the, you couldn't experience the, to a certain point. I had already experienced that. <laughs> Why wouldn't I want you to dreams. experience you something wanted us, I had already <laughs> you experienced? You dressed all your kids up as Nebraska Husker football players. We lived in Nebraska. <laughs> so what? If all we my baby in, photos are saying future Husker number nineteen or something I like that. You your like sister post us in a cheerleader costume. What? What? A, what does that got to do? If we lived in Mississippi. Whatever Mississippi's team is, you would have been dressed up as that. I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just probably the cheerleader. Okay, well, you know, for me, sports have always been really difficult because there's something um, I, I I don't know what it is about me, but I have a really hard time understanding sports. Not like why do people play them? Because I love sports. I love watching. Football. I know. I, I can't love... tell you how many times I've explained football to you. And I, you still don't get it. I know. It's like statistical <laughs> math to you. But th that's the problem is there, there's so many <laughs> things. It's not that complicated. I know. And soccer is not that complicated either. But I forget, like, what are all the positions? <laughs> I don't know. Kick the ball into the, to the net. because you just don't care. No, it's, I, I do care. I just I don't understand it. Like, I just, I just can't get it through my head why this is, what that is, what this does. It just does not make sense to me. I've never got that, right? So you never really got that vicarious living through me. You got it for through your other boys. No, because yeah, they they didn't play. I mean, I had to pull your middle brother out of football because his grades started tanking, and then he when he got into high school, he liked building houses more than. Oh, that's right. He did the habitat for humanity thing all right. the time. Right. He just. Help build several houses. During I remember that time you were going to get him a hammer for like his birthday or something. And then you took the, the hilt and then you were like carving his name to it. But you carved so much out of the hilt to put his name in there. They were like, if you were to slam it on a nail, it would just break. But it it was supposed to go like on a plaque. But yeah. You but say then that now, but I'm moron, fairly certain but you... Someone. I don't know who did it. You're Somebody <laughs> actually tried to use it as a hammer and broke it. Which son do you think that was? I don't know. I don't know who broke it. All I know is I found it in a box broken. Okay. All right. I think I know which one it was, but... Well, it was probably the oldest. Mm-hmm. But then again, let's be honest, you're not real great with the... Uh storage and cleanliness of all your tools in the garage it really is just a, a giant pile <laughs> all the <laughs> sockets are in the dude, same drawer dude no they are not what's this got to be if the you dude? open any of the drawers on your workbench out there there will be such random crap in there there will be things that you've had that are older than my existence on this earth why are you getting you, in my drawers because i actually like try and use those tools once in a while. When what dude serious don't even play with me. <laughs> when was the last time you whipped out some of those tools? I can tell you never. That is I can tell you there are tools in there that you you probably got on some sale at Sears and probably. then you used them that day to put together a workbench and then you put them in the drawer and that was it. Some tools you only use every once in a while. Once every 30 years isn't once in a while, Dad. That's like an anniversary thing. I have it's bought like... tools to repair a car that were proprietary tools 
for like the four... crescent wrench isn't proprietary. I use crescent wrenches all the time. Yeah, in a multi tool in the back pocket, man. You're, I'm like going out there. I'm trying to find stuff. First, it's just a complete net. You have a bucket of wires from stereos from like the '70s. You never Why? go when you're gonna need no. it. Okay, Harold. I mean, I know I collect pen caps, but that seems almost more practical than some of the nuts and bolts. Of get. You've got like pennies. when the zombie and, apocalypse zombie, happens. Yeah, when electricity goes out, a, a couple copper wires are really, really gonna do the trick, Dad. They're really gonna do the trick. To I can poke coil them, the them in such a way with a diode to listen to am radio yeah when everyone's dead listening to am radio oh boy maybe i'm the sure only that. way we get government information this isn't ham radio the government's gonna shut us out they don't care what's this have to do with living vicariously through man the internet? all i'm saying dog is that a lot of people around your age the 40s 60s around that time have been doing the uh, vicarious living because they for whatever reason were never able to achieve you know they're this is so this no. <laughs> you're saying we're all worthless because we want the best i did for not that, that no 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 that is exactly what, oh I've, you could never achieve any greatness so you wanted to instill it some way vicariously yeah, i'm saying it. by because you know, you're finished. i didn't said they'd never achieved their potential air quotations their potential because it just comes down to some of these people that you know and you know them as parents. You've met them. You've met some of these people where they think they are God's gift to this side of the world. That, well, you know, if I didn't uh, have an ingrown toornail in ninth grade, I, I would have been the governor of Texas. <laughs> I have you know, no idea what you're oh, talking about. come on. You've met those people. They just think they are so high and mighty. But because of some dumb slight, whether it be God, the government or grandpa stop them from achieving their well, life goals that's a bunch of people who don't take personal responsibility for their life choices but, right but i'm i'm just saying that though everyone knows those kind of people so they have something slighted them but and then they're they're not no, able to achieve their potential whatever they I'm think not, their I'm potential not, is i'm not faulting you for saying that some people are that way However, you started off this entire segment <laughs> I'm by, just, I'm by castigating <laughs> the entirety of Gen Xers or Baby Boomers into that or kind of... Because Baby Boomers did it, man. Baby Boomers did the stupid, uh, what, are you, what are you, the participation trophies and crap. This, it's the them. They're the one that put that all in there because growing up, their parents were like, either you're winning or lose, kid. There is no trying. That, I... And then your your generation came through and like we're all gonna die, we're all useless. Oh, what? Let's make some good movies. We are recording a podcast on the internet because of Gen Xers. Yeah, but the services we use to do this are because of Zoomers. Uh, incorrect. Uh, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, any of those guys? They are not. They are millennials. Well, right. But a Bill of... Gates is a Gen Xer. Is he a Gen Xer? Well, I, he's no, he's, the... he's, a, he's a boomer. Because he was born in like... He's on the cusp. What, what year did the boomers end? Would that well, be like 60? 65. Yeah, he was born like 64. Well, I just said he's on the cusp of being so a Gen he's Xer. not a Gen Xer. There well, is no well, well. You know, you're on the cusp of becoming a millennial, Caleb. You're like right at the beginning of the Zoomers. So, uh, you know, you're you're a millennial. Nah, but I'm not. All right, there's a definitive cutoff point there with uh, yeah, 96, you're, 97. You're okay, well, there. you know, let me just finish all this. All right, people living vicariously. We get the concept. M mommy daddy weren't able to achieve their square quotations uh their full potential um so they're gonna try and force it on their kids i couldn't play football or i couldn't go for class president or i want you to be a ballerina and they like force their kids to do oh, that bill gates was born in 55 yeah so he's a boomer he's also worth 100.8 billion dollars by the way but whatever nice how much is elon musk worth um so you get all these people and that, mark like, zuckerberg is definitely a gen xer he was born in 84 yeah you said millennial didn't yeah you? i thought he was a millennial i did and too i didn't jeff realize. bezos what how old 19, is he 1964 he's only 55 
Yeah, I can't. I you know honestly, he looks like one of those guys where he could be in like well, his. Because he looks like Daddy Warbucks. I mean, I guess. Anyway, anyways. Uh, so like Jeff Bezos, who runs Amazon, which is has like no profit whatsoever because they just keep spending, 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 buying companies. Well, the hope is that they're playing the very long, 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 we, long. Game. Don't get off on a tangent. It's gonna crash. Gen- it could crash and burn any day. Yes, it one could. mistake. Gen Xer. Okay. All I'm saying. All right. Cool. All the I'm, I'm only saying that all the cool stuff that you keep saying Zoomers invented, are only apps. No, that no, no. Ride I, I didn't say they invented. I'm saying they're running it. AI is running it. AI doesn't exist. One, two. Your headphones are on backwards. How do you know? <laughs> Because it says right on your left ear. It's been bugging me since we started for the past, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> anyway, so this uh, vicarious... <laughs> you're just looking at it. Uh, this vicarious living thing. We all get it. We all understand. There's parents that oh, do that with their kids. Oh, you sound so much better that I've switched them around. <laughs> well, at least you don't look as much of a moron in front of me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Feel the love. Hey, you love you, Dad. Um, so yeah, okay, again, we get the vicarious living. We all have all seen it at some point. Um, so what's happening a lot with my generation right now, people are living vicariously through the internet. So instead of going to Coachella, instead of going to national parks, um, going to Dubai, racing a car, you know, whatever, they're watching videos, wa- looking at pictures, reading stories about those things, and they're enjoying that more than actually going there. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. Yeah. I see and, it all the time. And I do too. You know, because I think it's, first off, it's stupid how much an Xbox One costs right now, even a 2015 original one. Um, but I don't, I don't have, I don't want to pay to get that new one. And then there's some games I can't play on my Xbox 360. I have to play an Xbox One. So I'll go and I'll just uh, watch walkthroughs of people playing certain games so I can see the story. And, and then I like the personality of the person playing the game. But I'm vicariously living through Xbox them. Xbox One is two seventy nine ninety nine. Yeah, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah. Well, the drop at one time it is. Yeah. Well, but why is an Xbox One X dash X one terabyte eighty nine ninety nine? It's it's not eighty nine ninety nine. Well, it is from this store. Let me see. Yeah, something ain't right. It must be it. That, that's I think that's a Project bit. Scorpio edition. I don't know, but anyways, well, I'm just wondering. Um, I've never priced them. I bought you an yeah. Xbox like 360. I have the original one. Yeah, you, we got it. I I think like the month Xbox One came yeah, out. They the original traded one. in the Wii at the mm-hmm. local games <laughs> stop or whatever. yeah. Then we went to <laughs> Nebraska Furniture Mart and you got that. And I still have my original Halo Four game, which I've beaten like. 12, or maybe 20 times. I don't know. I've played through it so many times. 12, 20, whatever. To the point where now where the disc is actually corrupted. I'll get to certain levels, and it just like... Which wow. just dies. And anyways, <laughs> keep getting me off track, man. <laughs> um, the people keep That's living through this vicarious... Uh, everything on the internet to the point where they don't see I, yeah, life as... I know. As... People take virtual vacations now. Right. And they're, they're viewing the online world as if it's the real world. You know, well, I, they go outside and they view that as this like online. You, know, you, you, you go on Facebook, but they, they, it's beyond that, Caleb. Because uh, man, child, because uh, what I notice is I will be at a certain event that allows cell phones, right? And instead of actually watching the event, everybody's got their cell phone up and they're watching it through the screen, right? of their cell phone while they're live in front of the event. Now I get it. Uh, Cause I will often take like a minute of video or a few pictures, but then I stick my phone in my pocket, but there are so many people and it's more than a small percentage. They just have it up. The they entire just have time. it up the entire time. And I'm always amazed by that because Cause if there's through... no photo or video, it never happened because everything's so archived. Now. But also your sh- the screen uh, compresses the picture. You don't get the full um, 
effect of being there if you're only focused on that little tiny TV screen. So, or your phone screen or whatever. Um, you know, a comedian uh, I, that I listen to <laughs> on the podcast, uh, Henry Zabrowski, he's talked about going to concerts and things like that. He's he's like 35. Um, but he says, this, his, this is his terms for it being acceptable to have your phone out at concerts, is the first song you can record, and then you take five photos at the beginning of the concert, yeah. and that's it. The rest yeah. of the time, Put phone's your... off in your pocket. Yeah, experience the moment. It, it's, it, and it, it, his main thing for that was, like, if you're in the back and you don't really care, or whatever, but if, you, if you're like those people that are paying all that money to get up front, Put your phones up because all we see is hands sticking up. I'm there to see My Chemical Romance, which isn't a you know, song or been in concert for years, but you know, you're there to go see some band and no you can't because you have to watch it through someone else's phone. But it also comes down to price, it has to come down to convenience. You know, it's easier for me to watch um, like last week we talked about uh, Kanye West and his Sunday service at Coachella. Mm-hmm. Well, like, I watched videos on it, I looked at people discussing it and things. I wasn't there. I Just like all these protests, the president's inauguration, I wasn't there. But I well, lived it through, you know, it, but it it, 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 it it crosses that line from just the yeah. old media where it's just a camera in front of something and you're seeing something live happen versus the way it's filmed and it's interpreted and it's fed to you as if you are there yeah i i blame professional sports for this Mm -hmm. because uh, professional sports have made it so expensive even baseball games to go to a major league baseball game costs hundreds of dollars yeah and just remember you're watching a bunch of millionaires run around with a stick and ball getting mad at each other well this is why you don't like sports because that's the way you would couch it however um being live at a baseball game or a football game is a great experience. Um, but it's a different experience to watch it on TV because you get all the close-ups and things that you can't get in the stadium. But you miss the... Uh, ambiance. No, uh, you could say ambiance or the camaraderie between all the fans that don't even know each other, but you're all... <coughs> excuse me. Rooting for the same team. Uh, <coughs> That's just an amazing thing. And so, but professional sports have forced us not to go to the games because the average person in the United States can't go to an NFL game. I mean, a ticket costs 200 bucks. Um, and professional baseball is getting up there as well, where a ticket could cost several, close to $100, go see a baseball game. So, and you go to the, if you try to take your kids to a game, I mean, you could be dropping three, four, five hundred dollars after you buy a pretzel and a few sodas mm-hmm. and such. So it gets so expensive, you end up watching it on the TV, which has been uh, articulated in such a way and fed to you, like you're saying, uh, so that you see the game from this perspective rather than from the perspective of actually being in the stands. Yeah. And it feeds into a whole bunch of other things, too. Uh, one thing is car culture. Um, so, I'm trying to think of a car that's came out recently. People have been def- divisive about. Um, Tesla? No, no. Uh, it, majority, almost everyone likes Tesla. Uh, yeah, not me. I, I know you don't, but the majority, majority of the people out there um, really like Teslas. And again, I've, I've only ever seen them. I've never been, like, like right next to it, I've never been driven one or been in one, so I don't have a real opinion other than I think the technology is really cool. I think it's great. Keep wanted people to work on it. Um, the the Ford Focus, right? The Ford Focus RS, which was the very high end hot hatch sports version of it. Um, there was a lot of debate about it because people are getting mad at Ford, like, oh, why are you guys getting rid of it? That was my favorite car. Why are you getting rid of the Ford Fusion? Why are you getting rid of all these cool cars you guys had? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And they have all these really detailed opinions about these cars, like the, the new uh, 2020 Toyota Supra. Mm-hmm. You know, so like the last Supra that came out was in the first Fast and Furious movie okay. with Paul Walker. And that's how long ago the, f- the last... Uh, super came out they killed it off after that 
um, so like people are buying those model Supras for like a hundred thousand dollars now. So what's controversial about them? Well, the new one has a new style, and people are like, oh, well, I don't, I think it's stupid. Blah blah blah. Oh, and they like they just have these crazy opinions about how it looks and the pricing's so dumb. But here's but here they are in their back, their mom's basement, driving a '94 Corolla. What's well, because the, they want to drive it in the video game? Well, beyond that. People are getting so mad at Ford because they're getting rid of cars. They're getting mad at people redesigning this. But it's about buying power. You're going to get mad at a company for stop selling something. Well, it's done. You guys are not selling anymore. Well, then go out and buy it. That's why it's not being sold anymore. No one's buying it. You can you can illegally download a picture from Google all you want and put it on your, be- your desktop screen. You can buy t-shirts from some off third party, not red- licensed Mm-hmm. for t-shirt company online you can do whatever you want but if you are not buying that car you are not helping it survive that's why True. some of the coolest and craziest cars we have now in car culture don't exist anymore because nobody bought them Th- that's just what it is and so people are that's one of the things with my culture living vicariously through the internet is they go in and like oh this car's so cool well dude like at least go to a dealership and like actually look at it you know, I want to go to a dealership at some point, and well, they're they're starting to close down a lot of the Tesla uh, dealerships because that was just a project they're doing because it's order online. Anyways, I wanted to go to one, and I wanted to sit in one. Um, I wanted to go test out some Subarus that are out there. I mean, I know I'm not actually going to buy the Subaru, but I want to go and actually see it. And I want to have an opinion about the car and what it's like. So I you're going to go waste some salesman's time. Well, right. There's a reason why I don't really want to do it unless I'm going to buy it. But at the same time, I want to experience this car. And there's no other way for me to do that. So I understand why some you people could do rent it. rent one. No, I'm not going to do that. Because a lot of times the, the cars you rent are they're crap. So what... All I'm saying with this is that the, you're, the you're Zoomer, contradicting yourself because you're talking about people who are stealing intellectual property, and then you're going to a car dealer to drive a car around without any intent to buy it. Well, I never said I did. I'm just saying that's something I'd want to do, but I haven't because of that reason. What I am saying is that um, I totally understand and see why. People live vicariously online. Why they go out and they do all these kind of things, um, because it's difficult to get around. It's it's expensive to get to some places, uh, but at the same time, it's just an issue with our culture. And I, this is mm-hmm. g- even getting to another part is paycheck to paycheck is I think an even bigger part of it. I was talking to coworkers at um, Best Buy because they were talking about all oh, marrying their significant other, and they're they're actually I think. Most of them are 19, so they're a little bit younger than me. Anyone that's above, older than me is higher up on the scale. Um, and they're talking about, oh, we want to buy a house together at some point, probably a starter house or whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. And they're talking finances. They've got five bucks in their checking, 300 in their savings. And they're like, that's totally normal. I said, no, that, that, is, that is not normal. I thought I w- I'm near broke. That's how I feel constantly. Well, that's good. Well, yeah, because I've been broke. Like, mm-hmm. when I was in Canada, I was broke. I had nothing. Um, it was just really a really scary feeling, especially when you're living in another country. And, you know, you're just eating ramen and, like, chocolate that was free in the cafeteria. <laughs> um, and the rats from the alley. Kind of. I mean, that's what it felt like. But yeah, I'm seeing that, and I'm like, no wonder you guys aren't actually, like, getting in your car, going on a road trip to Yosemite. Which is, is some, when I have like a week off, I'd love to just go to some awesome national park like that and just drive up there and just get on my skateboard or bike and just kind of go around. Mm-hmm. Just to be there and soak it in, put, put some headphones on or whatever, just have fun, relax. But no one really wants to do that. No one wants to go out and experience that. One, it costs money. Two, it's more effort than just is logging it, on your computer. It, you keep saying that no one wants to. In my generation, the Zoomers, but the majority it, of them. If they had money, would they go do it? Maybe. But if they went, and this goes back to the Coachella thing. Like when you're talking about at concerts, mm-hmm. you should look up a vi- uh, one of these videos where someone, it, it's got millions of views now. This dude went to Coachella, pulled this phone out, and he's just walking around like this before one of the concerts is going on. Coachella does not exist for the music anymore. It exists for the, 
for aesthetics. Let me seriously look it up. Like a Coachella video, everyone on phones, and you'll you'll see every single person's posing. Mm -hmm. The whole shebang exists. They're all for plastic bananas. Exactly. People are dropping thirty five hundred dollars on a three day weekend just for like ten photos on Instagram for the next week. Because they're so concerned with everyone else's image of them. That's the reason, like, they get bad loans, they buy really expensive stuff, because they're so concerned with everybody's image of them. That, uh, that, and that they think somehow doing all these activities is going to make them better, instead of going out and living the way they, they actually want to live. I mean, it, it's, it's nuts. And it, it's what makes it so confusing is that you have all these people like, well, I want to go to Yosemite, but oh, the money. Okay, cool. So uh, here, here's a check for $10,000. But then they go to Yosemite, and then they don't actually experience the park. So what's the solution? M my personal solution is that social media ceases to exist. I am, I am dead serious. I would love to see, like, all social media pretty much get run down to the point where it's just html on a web page and it just sucks to go to you know i think facebook messenger and video chats i think those are great youtube to a certain extent is really cool um but the with some of the devotions i've been doing in the bible i'm going back and looking at some of the channels i've subscribed to and i'm just like eh, you know what this is just so toxic it's like the person's not bad the content they're doing is not bad but it's how they're presenting it and doing it. it just comes across as i really liked this when i was 17 i'm getting this point where i'm like you dropping the f-bomb every other word and then your silly jump cuts and everything those were cool when i, I but they're just not anymore because it's too yeah, childish you're you're not brain damaged anymore well i mean I, i'm i'm pretty brain damaged but um not to the extent i was in high school yeah um but I, yeah, I think if you just get rid of social media, you get rid of that way of people faking the way they look online. Because if you want to make yourself look good in real life, you actually have to work for it. And that's the thing. People talk about America being obese. I think those numbers started skyrocketing as soon as Facebook and all these other things came on there. Because you can make yourself look no. good. I No, I think so. No. I totally think so. It starts going up it even higher. It started going with, up when the FDA... Uh, instituted a new food pyramid right. and started the non-fat craze. Yeah. Um, and but, some idiot heart doctor said cholesterols that you eat is causing your cholesterol to go high. Okay, right. It's been going up since then, but I mean, as soon as social media started, like getting, gaining momentum, it's just whoop, maybe they're both together, maybe it's causation, correlation, whatever it is. But social media adds a whole lot to people being obese, not being active, not doing anything. Oh, I would agree. Yeah, I, people I, on their phones that are not getting any. Well, it's not even that. Steps. It's, it's just they're trying to make themselves look good without putting any effort in, and uh, it's just really difficult. I mean, why not just look good in general? Because it's harder to make yourself look really good and then put it on the internet versus just. Put it on the internet and Photoshop it. Yeah. But it, but people are pretty intuitive anymore. They can tell most of the Photoshopped images. Well, that's where the difficulty is coming from. Like, yeah, you, I could sit down and tell you, that's CGI, that's fake. I know mom can't. It's funny when we're watching a movie, I'm like, oh. She's like, what are you complaining about? I'm like, oh, that, that dinosaur they got just looks so bad. What are you talking about? That's great animatronic. She's like, it looks so real. Animatronic. I'm like, mom, this ain't e this ain't E. T. This is this is uh some bad CGI. E. T. Phone home. Yeah. Um, you know, I can tell a lot of stuff, but there's things now that just are, they're getting so good, and it's all about posing. Like uh, I saw this video of uh, this guy that he was on 4chan and Reddit and took. There's people that stalk youtubers and instagram stars and things like that not to be super creepy with them but just to see their everyday life and they're taking photos of them right after they do a photo shoot some of them are like uh, and they got these proportions well it's really because they're holding there's something holding fat back 
yeah. at, behind their back, like a clamp. And there's like all this kind of stuff. And then they take it off and their belly goes, whoop. Well, yeah. And I learned a long time ago that. Uh, I, first off, I just want to say, and there, there's nothing wrong with that. Right? So I'm not. <laughs> I, there's nothing wrong with clamping your back fat. No, I'm, what no, saying? what I'm saying, there's nothing wrong with just looking the way you look. Oh, looking for yeah. women out there, y- you guys are beautiful. Yeah. Stop, stop going with this stupid. You have to be skin yeah. bone dry or something. Or skin, what is I don't skin know, bone dry? But it, but just <laughs> looking like a model. There's no re- like my girlfriend. She is beautiful, gorgeous. But there's models that are like healthy weights. Well, right, but then everyone says, like, oh, they're obese. I'm like, no, those people are not obese. The people are obese are, like, the ones sitting behind the computer complaining that they're obese. Yeah. But anyways, go on. With you. I just want to make that preface. Well, I that. learned a long time ago that Kim Kardashian tends to have this special LED light around her phone. So when she takes her selfies, basically she's got a professional grade yeah. light around her phone to make sure that she has such a bright light when she takes her picture that it's easily manipulated mm-hmm. by Photoshop and such like that because there's no shadows and things. So they're they're all paying big money. And the one that gets me is these girls that take, uh, but guys are doing it now as well. They, they take 35 pictures of themselves and then spend like the next 15 minutes looking through all the pictures and deciding which one was the best to post on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Uh that's a waste of time. Yep. I mean, I, I'm guilty to it to some extent. I don't usually take selfies unless I'm saying it to my girlfriend to be silly. Um, but if I do take a, a picture of myself to, you know, put on my Instagram or something just to look nice. Um, if I take several of them, either I'll try and find the one I look the nicest in, the one I look like I didn't know the photo was taken. That looks the most genuine, like someone took the photo. Mm-hmm. I like how that looks on people. And it's, it's not to be really, really weird or creepy. I just think in general... Photos that are taken of people that they don't know they're getting a photo taken of just looks more genuine. So I kind of like how that aesthetic of a photo. So those are the kind of photos that I usually like. But you're like not to... taking like 35 pictures of yourself. No, I'm taking three and I'm going with the best one. Right. You know. And then you don't look at the three and go, oh, these are all awful. I have to start over again. No, I mean, I mean I'll mean, i take like 50 and send them all to my girlfriend, to the girl child. I'm just sh- to bug her. Yeah, I'm sure she just appreciates that. Yeah, especially when she's in class. Speaking of class, she she takes her she finished her final today. Oh, she did. Yeah, so she um, is scotch free. Scotch free. Yeah, that is not how you say that. That's scot free. free. Well, you're still here, so I can't quite say that, can I? Mm. <laughs> anyway, people are living vicariously. I think it's going too far. My personal remedy is just get rid of social media, except texting and video calling. Maybe a little bit of YouTube. But anyways, yeah, I just think social media it, it adds to it, and we should just uh, regulate Facebook and break it apart, man. Stop, stop. Nothing needs, nothing on the internet. Regulate it, man. Stop, no, man. Neutrality, dog. Uh, yeah, no. Just say no. Just, just say no to drugs, kids, because that always worked. Remember, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I never had anyone ever offer me drugs. Well, that's good. The way that the cartoons did. Well, we appreciate you listening today. Um, locally, we're going through some flooding events and uh, really busy at work trying to take care of that. So we haven't got the website set up yet. Yeah. And this podcast coming in a day late, probably you're hearing it probably a couple days late by the time it gets out there. Um it's just it's been really difficult trying to get everything done that's why the episode's a little bit shorter than it was last week um but we're definitely working we're committed we're gonna keep doing this because gosh darn it we like you yeah well this is our stream of consciousness and we appreciate you listening uh as and in the future this segment we will be asking you to help support the show either helping produce or uh doing something making comments to us or even maybe even um helping us with a financial donation to help pay for costs associated with hosting the website and such like that so we're very thankful for you joining our stream of consciousness and we always want you to cross the streams so if you like the podcast share it with a friend share it with your spouse 
share it with a relative and help them understand that uh, there's good quality podcasting out there that doesn't cuss a lot and takes the time to uh, talk about things that we think are interesting. And thinking about things that are interesting, uh, I found so many stories this week on Don't Be That Guy. Okay, which guy are we not being? Uh, I don't even know where to start. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with this one. Okay. Cops to a Florida woman. Do you have anything else in your pants? She pulls out. Oh, alli- is this the trick an alligator. alligator? She had a baby crocodile, 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 little, yeah. little, little in her in her pant. Not just not just pants. Yoga pants. Was it like like? Nah, no, 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 no. It wasn't there. Okay. Although there is something coming up about that. <laughs> oh man. So she had yoga pants on, which would have made it obvious that she had a gator in her britches. Sir, I mean, ma'am. Uh, this thing was like a foot long. Was it five dollars? <laughs> well, I mean, come on. Why? Why? And I, you know what? The reason why we get all this stuff out of Florida is because their state law says that every every case, every time someone's booked, it goes into public records, yeah. so they can pull this out right away. Well, but this why? Is... Why does this exist? <laughs> why does what exist? Somebody walking around with Florida a cro- crocodile in their pants. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I mean, look, if it was tamed, yeah, I'd walk around with a crocodile on my shoulder, but in my so they, pocket. Mm. So first off, she runs a stop sign. So everybody out there, stop running stop signs. And a lot of this stuff. You only have to stop if there's a white border around it. No, you get the joke wrong. You can run any stop sign with the white border around it as long as a police officer is not around. No, 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 no. You only have to stop or stop signs with the white border around it. No. Yeah. Because that is the one you told me because you have two different ones you say. Well, for you. you have two. No, no, I no. Not you for you. Stop. Not for you. I am the only I child that has st- been living with you for the past one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four. I want almost you to. Almost five years now. There's no way that you have like been like, well, I've been telling the other kids. No, because I'm the only one you drive with. And I just keep talking to you until you're really annoyed. But you say the same stuff in the car, just like I say the same thing in the car to my girlfriend. You know, you only have to stop the stop sign with the white board around it. No, yes, is, Caleb, I've heard that the 50th time today. It has well, always saying. been, always been. You can run any stop sign with the white border around it as long as a police officer is not around. Well, obviously there was a police officer there when she ran it. Yeah, but the thing that's, if you read the story. Which I didn't. You did. Did you? She yes, she so the police officer pulls her over, starts asking her questions, and says, "What's in the backpack over here?" And she opens up a backpack that's on the passenger side of this pickup she's driving, and she's got forty-one turtles in it, like baby turtles. Yeah. Why are you doing that? Come on, man. And so the cop says, "Do you have anything else?" And then she whips the gator out. Honest officer, I just found it on the side of the road. I was going to take it to the beach and let it go. <laughs> I just don't get it. And she really has no excuse for having all these animals, but... Jeez. I, I don't... I can't say I understand. I can't say I do understand. I, I okay. Just none of it. Okay, none well, of it. None so of we it. go to the next Don't Be That Guy story. Okay. Gosh. Okay. So there's this woman. Another woman? Yes. Florida? Uh, where is this? Uh, yeah! That's in Florida, guys. <laughs> Here it we go. It's Florida. Two for two. <laughs> I don't know what city. She's in a Burger King, and uh, she's snarling and yelling at the staff. And so they call the cops. The cops come in. They, uh... <laughs> This is a funny statement the police say. We detected several indicators of narcotics usage. <laughs> several indicators. So, uh, she yeah. had some Xanax falling out of her nose. and uh, so I'm th- <laughs> That's not a Prozac in her ear. So I'm thinking snarling and yelling at the staff. Okay, so that is, that is indicators of narcotics usage. 
and uh, they started to do a search of her. And so during the pat down, uh, the lady pulled away from the police officers and the officers started doing a pat down again. And you know how they kind of pat up your inner thigh. And mm-hmm. that's when she started getting really crazy. So they end up arresting her and taking her back to the courthouse or the county jail. And the they had to do a strip search of her to see what was going on. And she had seven syringes oh, 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 whoa, 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 of a clear oh, oh. substance up in her hoo-ha. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw something where she was walking. She had seven syringes. Uh, the, the headline I saw on Apple News was that. Uh, this chick like walked into it was a Burger King, whatever, and she had syringes just hanging out of her body. <laughs> that's not. That's well, not... hey, man, that's what CNN said. Oh yeah. So anyway, I'm communist a news network. So anyway, they don't know. They they don't release what's in the side the syringes. So what is a clear liquid that you would? I assume it's like heroin or something. I don't know. Oh, you know, what? it's just a saline solution there. She was yeah. a wee bit dehydrated. It is Florida, after all. I, well, what is going down in Florida? And then... Drugs. Drugs. Crime yeah. is going down to Florida. Okay. This last one isn't Florida, though. This is somebody you kind of like. Uh, uh, is it Nigel? No. Okay. It's, it's this Jared Leto guy. Jared Leto? No, not Leto. that I like him. Uh, I, the Thirty Seconds to Mars is the band. He's, oh, is he uh, part he, of that? Yeah, he sings in it. They they got some bangers. Um, he kind of sucks as the Joker just because his portrayal of the Joker is well, super. Thought, yeah, I thought he was terrible. Yeah, I didn't even think he was that good in the Blade Runner twenty forty nine movie. I think he did a good job. I liked him in there. I thought he plays a creepy weird guy really well. Well, he did a creepy weird guy thing. At the Met Gala. So, he he walks into the Met Gala all... I don't even know what the heck he's wearing. But he... It's some kind of, like, dressy looking thing with a whole bunch of, like, diamond studded things draped all over it. And he's wearing this. It's dark red. I mean, it looks a little bit like he's trying to make fun of... Uh, a cardinal maybe in the Catholic church, but he has a clutch purse and the clutch purse is his head. By golly, what on earth? I just, okay, it's so actually I, artistically. Let me just, let me simply say this. If, if you didn't know that the clutch purse wasn't, Jared Leto, how do you say his last name? Jared Leto. Leto. If you didn't know his clutch purse was Jared Leto, and somebody just took a picture of that, you would think it was a guy with his arm around Jared Leto's head. Yeah. Because it's like, whoever did it is, did a fabulous job. But what a crazy yeah, so, nutcase. So everyone listening, this is what it looks like. All right. So imagine 80s power suit. It's got the big... Shoulders, there's huge padded shoulders. Now imagine the draping sides that you usually get from like the Goldbergs mom, the way she usually has her shirts. It's like that. And then it's just a red dress that hangs down. But it's got that Indian wedding kind of, you know, uh, dot, not feather, Indian style with the chains all over the dress. And it, But it's Jared Leto it's with Michael East Jackson gloves. Indian. The West Indies, okay. Uh, Jared Leto with everything holding a head of Jared Leto at the Met Gala. I don't know if he's okay. Dude is weird. We we should pray for him. Uh, I... To just go away. That's not, not even to help him or anything. Just just pray for him to go away. Yeah, I what. I, I don't even know what to say about this. I it's dumb. Yeah. First thought, I, is it is this his way of getting attention? It's kind of like a Lady Gaga thing. Well, the thing with Lady Gaga was, uh, it it it, it 
I don't understand. I guess that's where I'm coming from. Is I, I simply do not understand but, this. Here's the thing with Lady Gaga, right? So all her stuff she did live, right, for concerts. It was part of the gimmick of being Lady Gaga. This right. really crazy chick that does stuff, but music doesn't quite match what she's wearing. It just looks funny. But then you get people that go to these Met Gala things, and you're just, what the heck? Who yeah, paid I... you to wear that? I don't think he paid... Nobody paid him to wear that. I, I bet you there's an artist. See, this is the way I think it works. Hey, my name's uh, Jared Leto. I'm putting this on Craigslist. Um, yeah, I'm on really? Jared Leto on, uh, he put it on Superstar Craigslist here. I am selling my body for an art project for the Met Gala. Make something for me to wear. P.S. On Craigslist? Love you. Bye. Yeah, so then he just takes the oh hey man I'll pay you fifty thousand dollars to wear my my uh, my uh, head I made of you. Mm, all right, I bring the head. It's almost like I'll pay you two million dollars to wear my really ugly dress made for a woman, but she accidentally died in a car accident. But it fits you magically. So then she he wears it and he's got a head of himself walking around. That's all it is. I think they're just walking billboards. Dude, I, I, I think this whole thing is walking. He has mental problems. Which one of these people don't? No, that's true. Seriously, I, which one of these don't have some kind of like mental deficiency? I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm pretty sure I've seen Cardi B sitting around eating lead. <laughs> well, that's not going to help with mental capacities. <laughs> I don't think there's much to begin with. You know, some of these so, people, you listen to them talk, like, yeah, man, I'll be like, doing it, not dying like this. So, I'm doing that. Blah, blah. I'm like, you from Alabama? What's going well, on? Speaking of mental capacities, so. <laughs> don't talk about my brother like that. Stop. Um, so there's a couple in Mongolia who died from the bubonic plague. Hasn't you, that been, like, eradicated? No, I mean, in general, yes, but it's still going around. But you'll never guess how they caught it. Not okay, okay, a, okay, 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 okay. In a thousand give me, give me years, one hand, give me, give me, uh... I'll give you three, cho- three shots. Three okay, shots. Okay, with one, three shots, one hint. Uh... Three shots, one hint? Yeah. When do you want the hint? When? When. Now, so I can get my three shots. Okay. It has to do with eating an animal. Okay, so they ate the testicles of their dog. No. Okay, um, gosh, it has to eat, do with eating an animal. Yes. Um, oh, what is a really weird animal? That, okay, they got it from eating mice. No, although that is getting a little closer. <laughs> they got it from eating a gerbil. No, but we're in the rodent category. Okay, okay. So this couple died in Mongolia from bubonic plague. Right. From eating raw marmot. <laughs> what? A raw marmot. M- what is <laughs> marmot? Marmot. A marmot that's like, it's kind of like a groundhog. <laughs> They're not that impoverished there, are they? I, well, I don't think so. They... The pair had eaten raw marmot meat and kidney (laughs) and ended up in a six-day quarantine um, that killed a bunch of people, I guess, in the Mongolian area of China. Uh, Okay, well... um... The couple had eaten the marmot meat, a type of rodent, as it was thought to be a remedy for good health. And they died! (laughs) Sight got him! Got him, guys. That, that was a good. That was a good prank, guys. Bring him back. So, was this one of those? You know, your brother when he was over in Okinawa, he'd often say, "I went went someplace down the strip off the the base there," and he would say, "Yeah, they said we were eating chicken, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't." So, I wonder if this is one of the. But it was raw. No, they killed it, and then they're just eating it. I bet you they probably killed it, and then just did. Put it in some Tupperware and left it in the cupboard and then <laughs> let it incubate for a couple days. Because when it has the magic life white, those white life swiggles come out of nowhere and start moving around in it, 
that's when you know it's really good meat to eat. You just take those little white squiggly things. I like to call them maggots. You put them in a different bucket, and then so, you eat those later. So but they the just marmot, eat the meat there. They wanted the marmot maggots. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was it. The rest of it's just the byproduct. They're like, yeah, let's eat that anyways. <laughs> well, they obviously liked it enough to get the bubonic plague from it. Was it worth it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and then you got uh, this next one. That this next story, who I don't know who this guy is, Virgilio Martinez. Virgilio right? Martinez. Yeah, Martinez. Um, Martinez. He is a uh, world famous chef. I've never heard of him. Have you heard of him? So he's going through LAX. He's featured in Netflix Chef Table series. No, I feel like I know who you talk. Like I've seen, I feel like I've seen pictures of him. He's kind of a skinny guy, and he's got the little goatee thing going on. So what's the deal with this guy? Did he have a bunch of knives up his rectum? <laughs> Why do you always go to the butt? Um, I'm just saying that. Me, me, I guess people? he's Peruvian. I guess I didn't. Peruvian. Know he's Peruvian. What is that? Peru. I don't know. So anyway, he's going through LAX, checking in, you right. know, coming to the United States, just chilling. With 40 vacuum-sealed piranhas in a duffel bag. <laughs> it's for scientific purposes. He was hoping to serve the fish, known for its sharp teeth and menacing look, at an L.A. food festival. Now, I've been around, I've had friends that have had piranhas. There's no meat on a piranha. It's just like How eating a cat. Why would you eat a cat? Of all the animals, why a cat? There's nothing on it. He a says piranha they, is just bone. Yeah, they say they serve piranhas in the in Central America. So he, he must be making one dish with the fifteen piranhas. He said, "I was extremely obsessed about bringing piranhas because we serve piranhas in the Amazon at, in in Central America." So I said, "Guys, why not take a risk to bring piranhas to L.A.? Why don't you just <laughs> order them while you're in L.A. or have them shipped up there? I'm pretty sure you can't just." You know, put them in your colon in a Ziploc bag, and it's going to be a-okay with uh, TSA when you get over here, guys. So the dumb thing that he did, not only was it bringing 40 vacuum-sealed piranhas, the dumb thing he did was make a joke of it with the TSA agents. <sighs> They're like, what's in the bag? And he goes, bones and flesh. <laughs> a bones and flesh. <laughs> and you're deported. <laughs> See ya. So guess what the TSA agents did? They took him to the private interrogation room after his stupid they comment. They strip search him? Uh, uh, doesn't say that they didn't. We found 40 bags. Well, we better check to see if, uh, you know, you, uh, you're hiding some other ones. Bend over and cough. So they, so part of the way he proved what he was doing with the fish was he had a cookbook. And so the TSA agents are quizzing him over the fish. And so he takes out his cookbook and he said, look, this is what I do with piranhas. And they finally let him go after five hours and they let him go with the piranhas. Really? You know what? TSA would not let me take a razor in my, my <laughs> luggage that I would not be able to get to. They ripped apart my whole duffel bag to get to my, um, Little leather carrying case. I don't know what the actual name for it is. Yeah. Um, to get to my safety razor, to pull off the safety handle on my safety razor. So you have to twist the handle off, pull that out, and you have to twist the top off, pull that off. And there's no, another mm -hmm. metal sheet you take off. It's made so kids can't mess with it. To pull that one razor out, mm -hmm. and I said, "Well, because you can kill somebody with this, we gotta throw it away, man. I'm sorry." I'm like, why? Well, you uh, just went through my entire, like, ripped everything out of my bag when I was leaving Texas. Somehow, I was able to get down there. <laughs> yeah, they miss things all the time. Yeah, so why is it now? And I, I'm like, what, th this this little razor is somehow You're gonna... You're pounding on the table a lot today. <laughs> just, you know, I just got so mad. I'm like, great, thanks, thanks. I just did all that, you, you know, making me 20 minutes almost late for my <sighs> oh, white people. TSA. 
Yeah. Hey, did you see the army is going to bring back the World War II uniforms? Yeah, I thought they looked actually pretty good. I think they're fantastic. I think that's a great idea because that's something I've been wanting people to do because I get I get kind of sick of seeing uh people off the base and all this kind of stuff walking around and they're what not camis whatever all the camo stuff looking like they're about to hop in the Humvee and shoot people down in the Walmart. <laughs> well, that's what it looks like. You're yeah, in you're you in the same to, stuff you're going to wear hey, in the Middle when, East. When I was in the military, we were, you weren't really allowed to go off base on that. that yeah, that you, was kind of shunned. Yeah, you had to have your tie or I don't know a collar or something. Yeah, you had to have your. Well, in the army, they call them class A's, um, but you had a shirt that didn't have a tie and a shirt that did have a tie, and then you had like a tunic. Yeah, yeah, and I I think they should bring that back because I just don't think it's a good image walking around with with the camo. I mean that's what I've grown up with, mm. but it just doesn't look respectable because when you see that you see dudes walking around with a t shirt, baggy, whatever. It just because fashion really comes from the military. That's where suits and ties come from. Business formal. That's where a lot of the stuff in our American fashion has come from the military, just like technology. But then as the military is, you know code of whatever you're going to wear has I don't know, gone away since Reagan uh, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> ever since Reagan left office um, it's just <laughs> but, no <laughs> idea what you're talking about <laughs> whatever, since like the 80s, since like the last time you were doing this stuff everyone's just walking around in a t-shirt and baggy camo pants looking like they're from some backcountry Alabama dude in the trailer park have you seen how they dress at Google? Well, right. I think this is part of it. I think everyone, at the very least, should wear very nice jeans, have a tucked-in shirt, and wear a tie. It could be a short sleeve shirt with the collar with the tie. I don't care. But I think at the very least, people need to try. I'm going to get you a stapler. A nice red one. Ooh, yes. I'm already living in the basement now, so just write me a check and I'll light the building on fire. <laughs> well, that sounds like... Part of what's going on in this next little story I wanted to get your opinion on. All right. So this comes from an exorcist. Who's been an exorcist for... A real one, not the movies? Yeah, a real one. This is actually out of the um, National Catholic Register, an online magazine. Uh-huh. And this is an exorcist, a Dominican um, priest. Um, I Father Francis Dermine. I terrible pronouncing names. But anyway, he's been an exorcist since 1994. Mm-hmm. So about yeah, 25 years or so. Um, he uh, says that the um, uh, number one or the most significant Dynamic activity, that's why it's not number one, but the most significant dynamic activity in our current time is not possession, it's temptation. Mm. And he says the most common manifestation of, of the dynamic is temptation, which is much more significant than possession. This is because dynamic possession of a person's body occurs without that person's knowledge or consent. The possession in and of itself does not make the victim morally blameworthy. We must not undervalue the significance of temptation. It's not a spe- it's not as spectacular as possession, but it's far more dangerous to the soul. Yeah, I, I can see that. And, I, and uh, that's something I've thought about is that I feel like there's way more tempt- temptation today. Like, uh, not that there wasn't temptation when, you know, you're an eight-year-old in your house by yourself. You can get into a whole bunch of different trouble. Um, but you just, you have to pick your litter. Any sin you want with the internet and everything by you. Yeah, just, you have instant it, access to all kinds of crap. Yeah, and it's just so tempting because I even I'll be on Instagram and it would just be a sponsored post. Or I'm looking through the Explorer feed where it's just, I, I just watch memes and car videos and stuff like that. But occasionally someone will post something and you're just like one click and that'll take you to their, their, uh, you know, 18 plus older Instagram account and you could be scrolling on there for hours. You know, that, that's just how easy it is. Yeah. You're always one click away from Pornhub or 
it, yeah, and a lot of times because so many people, the way people are now, is they'll they'll post stuff that says says it's a kid video or Instagram. I don't know how they do it. The cover photo that's like a still, it'll be mm. like two Mustangs hitting each other. Okay, click on it, and it's some gay porn meme. Yeah, and you see a dude doing something you don't want to see with something else. You're like, oh, come on. But you then, know? yeah, I mean. I mean, that's how easy you're talk- it's just... Right, that's, and that's a lot of the internet. It's a lot of the sexual temptation. But there's some other temptations that are going on. Um, I, I think, personally, that a lot of the rise in the suicide rates, you know, we can draw correlations between a whole bunch of things, but I, I think people are tempted to kill themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of thing. I think in this modern day and age, people are tempted to make unethical decisions. It's romanticized. Yeah, a lot more. When you see uh, people uh, like the, who's the guy from Empire? Jesse Jesse Smollett. Smollett. So you look at that and he obviously faked a crime. Not only. Allegedly. Allegedly. He faked it. allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. He allegedly faked a crime and coerced a couple dudes to fake beat him up, allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, All of that kind of stuff. And then basically gets off with community service that he did five years ago. Mm Mm-hmm. How? So people are doing that kind of thing and it it causes the temptation to... Well, I uh, could do that too. Right. Why can't I get away with it now or, or to do other things? When when we don't have a rule of law anymore, and then I think that helps people to morally corrupt themselves. Whatever. So, and we teach, we teach people that there isn't any absolute truth mm-hmm. in schools, especially public education. Yeah, which is a bunch of malarkey. And all of these things, and it causes more and more temptation to do things according to our feelings, not right or wrong, according to um, what we think would be best for us rather than what's best for society. And so I, I read this article and I really agreed with this, uh, what this exorcist is saying. I, I think it's real and true and, and I appreciated him. Right. And I'm sure it's not a popular thing even in the Catholic church, but, I think it's real, and um, it's something that we need to be understanding. Uh, we've all been tempted by things. Of course, Martin Luther used to have his, um, I don't quite remember how he wrote it in the books, but basically he said temptations are like birds that are flying over your head. Every once in a while, one lands. You decide how you are going to handle that bird on your head or that temptation that comes into your mind. Are you going to swat it away, or are you going to let it sit there and build a nest? Because mm. birds... Eventually, it's going to crap on you. Well, and that's the point, is birds are... If you've ever really looked in a bird nest, it's nasty. Yeah. Because uh, they live in their own filth. So, anyway, I, I, I really... Think a, I think that's a solid point. I think, yeah, needs to be stressed a little bit more. Yeah, in, in the uh, work that I do, uh, I'm around people all the time that are... Uh, at one point in time had a morality standard, decided that they didn't need God in their lives, didn't need uh, to pray anymore or look at the Bible or any of their positive relationships and went down a certain path, made one choice because of a whatever that temptation would be, a moral code break, a sexual kind of thing, which I know was moral, but, you know, it, yeah, I view sex kind of temptation on a different level because it's uh, more than anything, sex involves the mind, the body, and the soul, um, which we can discuss at another time. But um, so people make those choices through temptations and end up down a path and find themselves far away from what they ever planned for their lives. And, um, and I fully agree with this priest that it's happening more and more than it probably ever has. Yeah, and it seems like people for whatever reason they... I was just talking to the, the internet about this earlier today about this uh, 20, it's called the spent bias. 
So it's the idea that, um, let's say, you and your significant other are taking a walk downtown to the movie theater where you already bought tickets to see a movie. But on your way there, the sun's setting and there's a park bench and it is gorgeous outside. It's just one of those once in a lifetime kind of sunsets where everything just falls perfectly. You turn to your significant other and you say, hey, let's just skip the movie, sit down and watch the sunset and just enjoy each other's company. But then your significant other says, but we already spent the $20, so we might as well go see it. So this is a spent bias. That money is spent. You don't own it anymore. It's gone. That money that no longer exists should not dictate your decisions. Mm -hmm. Maybe it can influence it, your behaviors, things like that. But in no case should money that is not yours, object that's not yours, anything like that, that, that you give away. It's not yours anymore. Not your problem dictate what you're doing so people will make uh, follow a temptation so they make a sin right okay you made a sin it's in the past ask for forgiveness you're good just keep moving but then people instead of letting that influence them like learning from a lesson or something like that they let it dictate saying well i've already fallen this far i might as well just you know go to hell in a handbasket and that that's what it is so it's like as soon as people think um you know i make one little sin well, that's it. They throw their arms up and they just go with the roller coaster. And they just keep getting farther and farther and farther. Mm -hmm. And it, it I mean I don't I don't know it's what a, it is. Well, it's a nihilistic attitude like there's no no reason to go on kind of thing. But part of that's our modern society that uh, people are growing up without hope. And that's the church is supposed to give you hope, but even within the church some denominations are kind of preaching today that just what you're saying if if you can't toe the line it's a very legal legalistic way to think that if you can't toe the line then you're just lost yeah and, and there's no redemption for you at all it, and it, it makes you feel so lost like there's nothing there and i there's there's so many other things even beyond uh christ and religion that plays into why our culture is becoming that way i you know i think part of it is that uh um from a parental standpoint, careers aren't passed down to their children, and parents have no say or anything about finding mates for their kids. I know that sounds really weird, patriarchal, or whatever, but think about it. All, for thousands of years, that has been what it is. Is you're a minister or something, right? So then I would be raised, and I would become a minister, and my son would do that and then occasionally if something starts changing a little bit some down some way down the generations it twists off into a different avenue or whatever but i know my life purpose right when i'm born i'm going to be a minister or at least i'm going to do something in ministry it's related to what my father did because he can show me how to do it so i have some purpose in life a job i'm going to do well and when it comes to mates the, you guys would help with the that concept process. of apprenticeship i mean instead of going to some sort of secondary education you went right. to apprentice to be a brick mason a electrician a, yeah but i mean like outside of that the, the parent well for thousands of years has just been that there was there wasn't programs you go to but that was but it, I'm, it's but a you little understand bit to yeah, an extent, I, I like you know your dad was a plumber some of you it, learn how to be a plumber yeah, some but, of it was these kind of caste systems that but none, nonetheless, even in the, the 20th century, you know, if your dad was a banker, my grandpa was a banker, I, I should be a banker. There's some kind of life purpose that's like thrust upon you. But, you know, one parent decides not to do it, then tell their kids, you don't have to do anything. So now we have this whole generation of Zoomers and millennials and even some Gen Xers now that act like mm -hmm. their kids that they, they have no purpose in life be, and they think they're completely lost because they've never had any guidance there never no one like sat down and told them you need to do this and then if someone did do that it was this complete black and white toe the line kind of thing where either you are a complete christian or you are a sinner and you are going to hell there mm -hmm. is no difference and yeah. th there's grace there's a difference there's all this kind of stuff and life is like that too where you know you're you, failure is not an option it's mandatory right i've said that to a lot of people <laughs> i it's true though it's not like it, we all have to fail at something i don't think it's mandatory i think it's inevitable i think it's I th well, right but it's man let's just say for god's purpose how we're all created 
God's like, no, failure is an optional. It's mandatory. You have to fail. Right? You are going to fail at some tasks. I, I don't know anybody that like when they the... first start getting on a skateboard, they're perfect right away. They all fall down. But when you start doing some sport, you get tired, you fall, you fail, you lose a game, whatever. It is mandatory that you fail because then you're going to learn what it's like. We all, everyone that knows the stove is hot and it hurts has touched it. And yeah, learned that was a bad re- idea. You refuse to listen to your parents. Exactly. But then you learn the process behind that. Why you don't do that. And you carry it on for generations and things like that. But now no one has this guidance. No one has this like pushing thing to try and push them forward to something in life. And then everything's put on them as black and white. Either you have a really rich job and you know what you're doing. Or you're completely lost and you should just go to hell and die. You're using a lot of universal terms no because one it's... everyone that well what am i supposed to say uh 42 percent of the population no, in wisconsin but you could said say that some they are people. nihilistically concerned about how someone is sp- but you know 95 percent of statistics are made up on the spot certainly yeah thank you for making that one up no 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 no, no. i heard i saw 87 percent of statistics even said that it's a 21 to well, 2 ratio i think we can come to terms with the fact that temptation yeah is yeah. a bad thing yeah i think i mean temptation is not sin but it's, it is the following we, it going into yeah. that temptation and le- letting it manifest uh, yeah and it sin. you know as jesus said the sin starts in your heart when you made the choice that this was even an option yeah and so jesus didn't say that exactly but that's a paraphrase from matthew 5 um to get on some less deep topics as we get close to the end of the show here okay um there's one interesting article that i uh because you're of this generation right that doesn't really carry cash i try and carry cash um as much as i can and there there is something about cash in the united states there you know the almighty dollar i think I don't think the United States will ever truly go cashless because it's all about the Benjamins, baby, right? So, but I've, I've, my, I'm, let me stop here. Okay, the reason why I don't think we'll ever be truly cashless, the same reason why I don't think cars will fully be autonomous, why that'll never happen. Um, you you want to drive out to uh, Western Nebraska on an autonomous car? Not happening because it requires perfect infrastructure and in big cities and things like that and on interstates where the lines are clear you can see the paint you can see the stop signs correctly everything like that it'll work just fine as soon as you get into a small town it's gravel and you got to assume what the speed limit is and there's no lines in the middle of the road or anything like that it's just faded paint and broken concrete and a cow yeah it doesn't work because it needs all those signals just like you go to some gas station in the middle of nowhere they're not going to accept that apple pay on your phone you better have the buck fifty in your pocket to <laughs> buy that coke. If they're using the charge card, they probably got the kachunk kachunk yeah, machine. Ch-chunk, ch-chunk. <laughs> yeah, you better have the buck fifty in your pocket for the yeah. coke. But that's yeah, but that's why I think. So, well, one of the nations over in the European side of the Atlantic that is looking to go cashless is Sweden, and okay. so they've been moving this way for many years. Uh, in fact, they have quite a you know in the United States, there's several states now that have. Po- and uh, municipalities that have passed laws that say you cannot be a cashless store or restaurant. Yeah, because it uh, they say it violates the Constitution. Well, there's different. They use different. And I mean, there's some things that say like you know the, the you as a business you have to accept the United States dollar. Yeah. So there's there's different reasons. Some of it they say it's against poor people. It, I don't want to dwell on that too much, but. Sweden has a... I just belch now. Yeah, that's okay. I forgive you. Thanks. I don't forgive you. Um, Thanks. For the belching. That's okay. Other things I forgive you for. A couple things I'm still working on. All right. Uh, Sweden um, is starting to ask their citizens to hoard banknotes, even though they're going towards a cashless society. And the reason they're doing this is because Sweden's starting to worry about uh, cyber attack. So everyone in Sweden has been urged to stockpile coins and banknotes, 
Noits? Noits. <laughs> Dwayne's and Bank Noits. Uh, uh, but when we, as soon as Brooklyn becomes the new Sweden, uh, we're gonna get in our car and, uh, you know, hoard the dollar bills. Okay, thank you. Bank Noits. Yeah? Coins and bank notes. In case the country moves Noits. completely to a cashless society and they get into some kind of a cyber attack that shuts their systems down. Backup that, cash. That way they can uh, have some backup cash. And the way, I, I think it's funny that they use the term squirrel away. Cash in small denominations. In case emergencies ranging from power cuts Power cuts to technology glitches to terrorism, Let cyber attacks glitches. by a rogue government of war. So they're telling people we're going cashless, but keep some cash in the mattress. Because in all likelihood, in it ain't going to work. Right. Well, it's already happened several times in Sweden where um, the internet the hub in the areas went down or they've had a power problem. Yeah. And like, People don't know what to do because nothing works and they're totally cashless and no commerce happens. Yeah. Even in most places in the United States, as long as the cash register still is open, still opens, they will uh, let you buy stuff, all that kind of thing. So it's, it's a very foreign concept to me. Obviously, this is a foreign country to me. Sweden, never been there, don't really care. Uh, uh, but it is kind of interesting that they're telling people to hoard cash when they're trying to go cashless. Yeah, it just kind of contradicts the whole point. Um, and this is this is the whole move towards Bitcoin, some kind of universal currency. There's a whole lobbyist group now. I heard that are they're like they're paying big money in cash to get people to. <laughs> legislate to use bitcoin they're i'm gonna pay you in cash, cash to <laughs> legislate towards bitcoin. No, there's an oxymoron yeah but well i'll tell you as someone that's worked in a lot of cash registers um why we don't like using cash nowadays it's not that we can't count it but the problem is transactions uh are all expected to last only a certain bit like most transactions are only supposed to last a minute at tops that's how long they're supposed to be scan 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 swipe get out because then it gets you the next customer um but you know if you're, you have a dude that's paying like huge amounts of money or like it's like a five bucks and they brought in you know, a bunch of random change and some dollar bills you're trying to sort it all out it's going to take you a little bit to count it all and get it all uh, sorted out and corrected but we you get in trouble for taking too long and then people get mad at you for taking too long. Then they complain. And that's why the card is just quick. It's easy. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. um, and especially since how people treat, especially, uh, uh, we, I don't know, service workers, whatever, blue collar people sitting at Best Buys, registers, Menards, scooters, whatever. Um, people suck. <laughs> well, people can be mean, that's for sure. Yeah, it just seems like they're getting a li little bit meaner than they need to be at the 16-year-old that's just trying to be able to pay his car insurance for the month. <laughs> Not that yeah. I've been there. Yeah, it, I don't know. It, it's just kind of odd um, going without cash. I mean, I, I use my credit card a lot, mm -hmm. but I keep I have a money clip in my pocket and I always have cash on hand. So. Yeah, I <coughs> here's the thing I don't get. So I know a lot of people that say like, well, I carry cash because I tend not to spend it as much as card. You know what I tend to do? I eat when I, when I have cash in my pocket, I tend to spend the cash quicker and not feel as bad as spending it um, on my card. Well, this is they have uh, several institutes have done studies when I say they have on people's spending habits. And most of them have come up with some kind of ratio that you usually spend around 20% more if you use your credit card mm -hmm. or even your bank card compared to using cash. So people in general spend, tend to spend more when they're not using cash compared to the tangible uh, 
money that might be in their wallet or purse. Yeah, I'm sure some people look at it as <coughs> it's painful to take that money in my pocket. Um, for yeah, but for me, like when I have a twenty dollar bill, um, it goes by sight and feel, not so much logic when it comes to cash in my pocket. I don't know if that makes sense. You break a twenty because you just bought something that was a buck fifty, and for whatever reason, they only have ones. Well, now it feels like your wallet's a lot fatter. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, I can spend some more. But with my card, I just have to keep a number. It's the same way with having a, like a checkbook. Um, you keep balance. In my head, I keep balance. Like if I spend this much because I check my account daily, mm-hmm. I know how much is in on my head or in my head, uh, how much is on my account. <laughs> um, you so, carry your money in your hair? No, I car- carry it on my phone technically. And I, j- I just know what it is. So, I, well, I'm not spending that much. That's going to break my $20 daily limit on what I'm what I allow myself most to spend on things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I know other people that it's their card is the reason they spend all their money. They don't have any money. I know a dude that's got – he's barely 30 and he's maxed out 13 credit cards. Holy buckets. Yeah. You know. How is he ever going to pay that off? Don't know. He's being sued by MasterCard and American Express. Right now, so well, the gas station. Yeah, that just speaks to our future. Which our last little bit here. Have you uh, watched this humanoid robot cross a narrow balance beam? No. Uh, this is spooky, scary. Spooky, scary, scary. Yeah. So I'm gonna flip my computer screen around here so the man child can watch this. But watching this uh, robot walk along is. A little bit eerie watching it balance on a balance beam and watching it's it. It's not even, okay, it's not even a straight balance beam. It's zigzagging yeah. across two, a pretty far distance. And it's maintaining its balance and it's, it has its little arms out to the sides and, and all that kind of stuff. And it is now taking, they're having it walk back. Across it's, it, yeah. It if if you were to just look at the legs, not the upper half, it looks like a marionette, like someone's controlling the feet. Like it is not a robot doing this. Well, this it, is some of the cra- That's nuts. Yeah, this whatever they're using to articulate the legs, there are multiple angles that the legs are moving that I've never seen a robot do before because. Of the zigzagging and stuff, the legs are moving in and out, and is it just walking on yeah. cinder blocks that are wiggling? Yes, and it's maintaining and it's, its, it's balance. Maintain, and it's it, it's walking so slow. There's there's easily, you know, two seconds from one foot to the next one. Two seconds is a long time for something that's like two hundred pounds. Yeah. I... Oh my gosh! How is it doing that? I yeah this and now it's walking like leg in front of leg across a, type, a four yeah. inch balance beam. So there's two uh, very tall black plastic uh, pallets, and there's about five inches from from one side to a little beam that's maybe three and a half inches wide, and it goes for like three, four, maybe five feet at most. And there's another like five inches of a gap to yeah. the next pallet. So it's not stepping in the gap. It's stepping. It knows there's a gap there, and it's just stepping right over that and going right over it, and then, oh my gosh! And it's leaning. The robot's leaning its body to maintain its balance. That's kind of the freaky part. I mean, it. It is. If, if this thing had skin on it, it would look like a human's doing this. I'm just hoping there there's some way of tricking these things someday where it's just like Wile E. Coyote. You just paint a door on a wall and it just sits there for an hour trying to get the doorknob, but it's it's not real. Yeah, I I uh, in the future I'm gonna have a dog like in the Terminators that can just sniff robots out. Because hey, you know you've known me long enough that one of my big fears in the future is that robots basically are going to take everybody's jobs yeah <coughs> there's not going to be for president man there's not going to be any reason for humanity to do any kind of labor because we'll have robots doing it and somewhere in between skynet and the matrix that's the future of humanity mm-hmm. 
we are either going to be batteries for a whole bunch of machines that take over the world or the machines that we program to protect us will assume that we are our own greatest enemy and try to destroy us. So I mean, either way, like Avengers Age of Ultron, die. you got the Matrix, you've got um, Terminator, you got Blade Runner, you got, I don't know, I mean, how many movies can you think of where robots eventually come to this point where you're like, huh, humans are the scum of the earth. If we kill them, then there's no more war or anything because we are all hive mind. Just go and murder them all. I, oh gosh. You know, I think as soon as we get to that point where we're injecting electronics into our body. Which like, people are already doing. Right, but, you know, and they're going like really far for, for it. Not just like putting a pacemaker in or something that help you stay alive. Mm -hmm. Like cybernetic cast things. Um, basically, just to keep track of you with the GPS. Um, like, oh, my girlfriend's been messaging me. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, oh my gosh, that's not good. Anyways, um, <laughs> but you're putting all these computer parts into your body for people to keep track of you and for you to get on like social media and everything. I think that, that is going to be the end of it. Because you ain't running from anything. As soon as these robots are out there, because they got those little uh, Boston Dynamics has those little dog robots oh, yeah. that just like march and they'll open the door mm -hmm. and then the other ones will follow and they'll close it behind them and everything. Those things, I'm sure they're loud as a jet plane moving and like. Oh, there's a Dark Mirror episode that's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all those robot dogs trying yeah, to stuff. I, man, it just speaks to me about having that compound that I've always talked about when I retire. Let's do it. Yeah, so at some point that's probably going to happen. Well, thanks again for joining us at the Man Child and the Old Guy podcast. We really appreciate you joining us for our stream of consciousness and uh, listening to us ramble for a little while. The longest and, episode we've done so far, so I lied in the break because I thought my dad was actually closing the show when we were doing the break in the center. So I was like, oh, sorry, guys, the shortest episode we've done in a little bit. Uh, psych, here we are. Yeah, gotcha, well, April Fool's. I'm the old guy. And I'm the, the man child. I'm here to tell you, don't fall up a down elevator. And remember... If I don't make it back, you made me come here.